anyway, I'll, I'll start it anyway. Well, I'm disappointed because I was going for an Oscar, so, you know. I know. I, I can actually see a sign. Yeah, I can see you, so go yeah, ahead. In case it does record, I will say, this is the Murrieta Friends of the Library Book Group meeting of April the 21st. Um, our book this month is Anxious People by Eric Frederick Backman. And uh, Lynn Gill is going to do the presentation. Okay, Lynn, it's yours. Yeah, well, it's good to see all of you, as I said earlier. And um, I hope that you got something out of the book. Um, it's, it, to me, it was a study of character and plot that just kept bouncing around, you know, back and forth between them. And I, I have to tell you, I personally thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm, and I did because of the characters and because every once in a while, I just burst out laughing. Yes. <laughs> yep. Freaked out my dog, freaked out my husband, did everything. <laughs> but, you know, uh, there were moments that, you know, that weren't funny. They were pretty, you know, life, ordinary type things, but I thought that there were moments in there. And so, um, we're not at the, the, the uh, library, but I did make up a whiteboard. Can everybody see that? <laughs> yes. I did my famous whiteboard. <laughs> I know, I missed your whiteboard. And uh, because I really think that it allowed itself to, if we could have just been drawing all of the connections to all the plots. So think about that in your mind as I, as I asked you to do. And um, the other thing was that there were a ton of quotes. And this was, of course, my my little wow. uh, <laughs> this is a tribute to Sharon I did this and put you know found a whole bunch of quotes that um I thought were appropriate for this and of course I have my favorite characters but before we get into it I'll talk a little bit about um Frederick Backman I have to be honest with you I've never read anything by him and I'm now so intrigued I'm going to try to read as much as I can that he has mm -hmm. produced um he started out as a journalist and he's also a blogger. He was born in 1981. So, you know, he's done quite a bit and written quite a bit in a short period of time. Um, has anyone read A Man Called Off? Because I have not read that. Yes, yes. it's excellent, yes. excellent. Okay. Well, <laughs> that book was printed because he, um, he wanted another book to be printed and the only reason that he got that uh, the other book printed was because he gave them permission to print the man called Av, and the book was my grandmother asked me to tell you she was sorry. So uh, he kind of made a deal with his publishers to get these um, these books published. Um, from what I understand, there's a movie now about the man called Av. Um, it's starring Tom Hanks. Oh wow! So it should be pretty interesting. And he also has a contract for this book, Anxious People. Yeah. Wow. So Ooh. Um, that should be fun too. I, I'd love to see who plays in it and how they portray it because I, I just can't imagine. Some of those characters are just so lifelike to me. Uh -huh. It's amazing. Um, he is married. He does have a couple of children, and he's he's really an up and coming writer. But I don't know if he's as prolific as some, but he does write, so hopefully he'll have another book out soon that we can enjoy. But from this book, and I keep going back and forth to my notes here, um, there were so many characters that in the beginning, you kind of wonder, what are they talking about? Because they're going back 10 years and they're going to the present and then they're going back. And you just kind of have to take a deep breath because who are these people and why are they doing what they're doing? So. Um, the whole premise of the book is there's a bank robber who robs a moneyless bank <laughs> and ends up taking hostages. And it's a story about idiots. And I wondered if you, if, if it was really a story about idiots or was it a story about humanity, about people? And I wanted to get your thoughts on that. I also wanted to, you know, know what was your favorite quote, if you want to share something if you had one in there um or incident that you felt you know contributed to the story and what was your favorite character and why because there were so many different plots so 
I'm going, I'm going to, if you tell me who your characters are, I'm going to ask you some questions about that character. Uh, once you've said why you like that character, and you may also answer the questions if you don't mind. So who would like to begin to tell me? Who hey, Bill. Okay, Anne. Oh, Bill. I, I liked, and I'm sorry, I read this so long ago, I cannot remember. Hello? But the older lady that Estelle. told everybody that her husband was going to park the car. Estelle. Oh, Estelle. Yeah. I loved her. She was such a calming force with all the hectic activity that was going on. And she seemed to have just a good solid, um, what do I say, her feet were on the ground and she was going on with her life in a positive manner after her husband had passed away. Did, and that's were you surprised that she had that affair? Mm, not really. Because this is uh, coming from Scandinavia, and that's very common, you know. So she very well could have, you know. Uh, it didn't phase me at all. <laughs> <laughs> what What about her um, her conversation in the closet? Do you remember about the conversation in the closet, which just cracked me up, first of all? But anyway. When she was drinking all the wine. When she was drinking the wine and then she was talking. What What do you think was the purpose of that? Yeah, I thought it was so fascinating. You know, I don't remember the words. Give me a hint or two. Give you a hint or two when she was talking about life and she was talking about, you know, we can't, like divorce is one. I have a quote somewhere. Um, divorce is, you know, keep talking. I'll get, I'll get to it, but. Does anybody remember the conversation in the closet? Yeah. Okay, Chris, could you? Oh, Chris. Oh, there's Chris. Oh, there uh, you are, Chris. Hello. Unmute yourself. <laughs> Which Chris? Well, Chris, Chris A said she remembered. Yeah, I right? do, I do remember it and it was just very heartwarming and very open and sharing. And it really was, I think, where you really got to know Estelle and the many sides of her personality. I think she surprised everyone by being the one that discovered the wine and then partook of it. But I think it, <laughs> what it meant to me was that that is exactly why she was there that gave her the opportunity to do what she had wanted to do. And that was see who the heck might be the people who were going to live in this place that she loved so much. Right. And, and it was neighboring. Oh. It? Her, that apartment was a neighbor to hers. So she wanted to check it out. The right? apartment that she was, that they were in was Estelle's apartment. Yes. yes. That's and, right. that's, and she, if, do you remember the name of the realty company? Oh, <laughs> House Tricks. House Tricks. House Tricks. Tricks. Yeah. House <laughs> Tricks. I, I just love that. Um, me up. <laughs> she constantly does these viewings so that she can, you know, interact with people and find out, you know, does she really want to sell it? Does she not want to sell it? Um, and she, she has her opinions about life, but the fact that she kept seeing it, I just found it interesting to, before we found out who she was that she kept saying, well, I'm sure there's some food in the refrigerator. Let's go see what we can find. Or I'm sure there's some wine over here. And everybody's going, okay, fine. They're just letting her do whatever she wants. I go, okay, no problem there. Well, I think she really saw herself as a caretaker too. Mm, yeah. The hostess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, she was the, the person who was trying to ground everybody who was... Yeah. She made a comment about divorce. She said, um, the worst thing a divorce does to a person isn't that it makes it uh, all makes all the time you devoted to the relationship feel wasted, but that it steals all the plans you had for the future. Because um, some of them were talking about divorce and, and of course the bank robber was, was talking about divorce. Yeah. yeah, that was an interesting thing. So she intertwined with some other characters. So who, who was someone else's favorite? I want to be next, okay? Because yeah. I, I finally got my picture up 
And guess <laughs> why? Because I had my my thing turned off, my pic, my computer turned off uh, on the picture. Bill put up, put one <laughs> one of those, uh, you know privacy things on and so but anyway I wanted to tell you that I hated this book I just hated this book at first because everybody was mean I mean everybody and I thought well this is just an awful book and by the time I finished reading this book I loved them all and I most loved I think um the the meanest one the the poor old lady that almost jumped off the bridge because she really changed she and I, for me it was a book about love and how you can love each other so much and do such nice things and i loved it and i loved this author he i haven't read a man about oh probably because i don't like Ove or whatever his name is, but um, I did read the grandmother one. We we had them both for for uh, book club, and I loved that book. I thought that was the cleverest book, so you should get that one and read it for sure. But yeah. anyway, I I loved the book. It was incredible. So what, what did you think about her carrying around that letter in her purse for 10 years? Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see. It's, uh, this will tell you why I'm not do doing this myself, because I forget everything. The, the kind of thing that I had goes to your cerebellum, cerebellum and it, uh, it kills your brain cells. And it killed my the brain cells that helped me remember. So, but uh, let's see. She had, oh, let's see. She had a, a letter that she never read, right? Yes. And she finally read the letter, and but I can't remember what the letter said. Okay. Well, it said so, it, it wasn't your fault. It, okay. It, it was it had four words. It wasn't your fault. Oh. Because it was, well, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I am so sorry. I well, the sorry. letter was from the man on the bridge, and we find out that the man on the bridge had been her husband. Oh, oh yes, that's right. Okay. Are yeah. you talking about Estelle? No, we're yeah, talking no. about Tara. About the Tara, okay, because I, I was getting really confused. I thought, okay. No, we're talking yeah, about yeah. Zara. Zara was the right. one who was, she was <clears throat> the bank. Um, she yes. ran a bank. She worked right. for a bank. Right. And, right. Um, she right. kept, the way she talked to Jim during that interview was hysterical. She was just, yeah. you know, throwing it all back on him. But yeah. Well, I, I, I love her. Is that why you love her? Because she was so sassy? Yeah. Well, I guess so, because I just thought she was fantastic that she, was such a meanie and there was a, a real reason for it and she really wasn't a meanie she was a nice girl so they yeah. were all just great it, it was uh -huh. I kept telling my husband I love this book I love this book so <laughs> well, don't feel bad well does anybody remember her interaction with Leonard does anybody know who Leonard is yes oh, yes Leonard, you know, yeah. the rabbit the rabbit the rabbit the rabbit yeah, he was just, I just went, what? A rabbit? What? Was funny. Oh. What's going on? Uh, well, my my favorite character is uh, of course Estelle, and she was 87 years old. And I thought she was funny, she was wise, and she was generous. And I just I, I just loved her humor. And uh, she was talking to Leonard, the rabbit. I let's see, I think he's <laughs> yes. his head was off at that time. But um uh, he was talking about his play because he was also an actor mm -hmm. and he was talking about his Merchant of Venice and Estelle says that she remembered a line from the play that light we see is burning in my hall how far that little candle throws his beams so shines a good deed into a naughty world 
such a naughty world. Oh, yeah, naughty mm-hmm. world. I, I thought that was so neat that she was talking to Leonard. Well, I, I just think it was hysterical that we had this character who's locked in the bathroom in his underwear with a rabbit hat. And then, all of a sudden, he's part of the story, and he is, he is really, he's what, he's, he's like the bridge. He's a connector. You know, he connected uh-huh. people, and he connected plots. And I thought, the way Backman creates characters who are connectors, who really have no place in the story whatsoever, <laughs> um, and then they become a connector and Zara just reacted to him just positively. It was amazing uh-huh. yeah. how, I how think he- it was so clever too. just the fact that the Backman created this job that Leonard had. It was his job to go to these places and cause chaos. And it depended on what you wanted. He could be the obnoxious drunk who threw spaghetti or he could be whatever. Just who thinks of that? I was just so impressed by the creativity. (laughs) Yeah. Well, maybe it was the Stockholmers because they were blaming (laughs) (laughs) Stockholmers. You know, I, I looked that up about the Stockholmers because I remember the Stockholm incident and reading about it, but they say uh, what I looked up said that people from Stockholm actually talk differently also, huh. whatever that means, huh. but they're, they're always looked up to or, or looked down to because they, they look down on people. Huh. And uh, I thought that was really interesting about the language different like dialects i guess that's what it means i thought that the reason that they they hated the stockholmers was because they made love in the park and (laughs) is that not true no no i i have to say marcia did more more uh in-depth yeah. study about them that I did. I did not <laughs> film stalker because I was just too busy trying to figure out all these characters, no yeah. what they were doing. And, um, you know, so Leonard was one of the connectors. Was there any other connector in there? Who, who else might have been a connector? The psychologist. Nadia. Yeah. yeah Nadia. Yeah. But who was Nadia? Do you remember? Who she was, was She was the girl. She was the- Wasn't she the young girl that was um, she was going to jump off the bridge and Jim saved her. Jack. Jack. Not Jack. Jack, yeah, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. But they, yeah. you know, we don't she know. Was the psychologist? Yes. She was yeah. also the psychologist. Yes. Yeah. Right. 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 But 10 years earlier, she was that girl on the bridge who um, Jack talked down off of the bridge. Um, right. She was my favorite character. I really liked her dialogue with uh, Zara. And uh, of course, the picture on the wall of looking right. out. And uh, But I thought it was hysterical the time Zara shows up without an appointment. And she had these plans. Uh, and, and then she realized, you know, that's what I'm here for. And we're going to have some resolution perhaps. And, and it, it was a good, it was a very good thing for both of them. I, I thought, I, I thought she was just a really interesting, but I also thought she and Zara, Nadia and Zara were the more sophisticated names. You know, he named them, you know, appropriately for their roles. Um, and, and um, I, I just, um, I thought she was a big connector, a real big connector because, because she was the girl. Yeah. 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 And, and the way she talked to Zara, you know, she didn't, she was much younger, obviously, but she really had that, that way of connecting with her, yeah. you know, which I thought was interesting. <clears throat> and half the time Zara was in control and, and she, yeah. she said, oh, now do I play this as I, as a psychologist or, oh, I, I could just see her fussing up herself to get to where she needed to be to, to handle the situation. And I yeah. thought she, the one time she laughed out loud and they both laughed. I mean, it was, it was 
poignant. It really it was. Was. It was. It was just the right time and the right place. Well, there, there were a couple of other connectors. Does anybody want to take a gander at who they might be? Hmm. Jim and Jack? Well, I think the balcony was a connector. Mm-hmm. Well, the balcony, the bridge was also a, a connection yeah. too. Even though it's an inanimate object, it was definitely the connector because it had some kind of meeting for everybody. Yeah. Um, I think like that. that. What about the pictures? The pictures that, that um, the bank robber had and then it fell, the paper fell or something and Jim and Jack discovered it and they were trying to figure out what these were pictures of. I mean, the they talked about the that monkey. a lot. The frog, the monkey, and the moose. Yeah. 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 Yes. Elk. Wasn't yeah. it the elk? Oh. No, maybe it was the elk. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. I, I didn't elk, catch moose. I don't, I don't know the difference between them. They're the same. <laughs> yeah. well, whatever. <laughs> I, I did not get the significance of it. Anne helped me with that a little bit. But what exactly was that all about? That was the children. The children. It was her children. And those were her, the nicknames yeah. that they gave each but, other. But she only what? had two kids. Too. And the mother was the was the elk. Okay, uh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And don't you remember when the kids were on the bus and the elk was running? They said, "Oh, the elk is coming," because that oh, was the mother that that. Was coming to the bus. That's so. That's okay. There was so much to think about in that book. You know, uh, yeah. uh, it just it was it was a lot. Did anybody have any reaction to uh, Roger and Annalena? Oh. Well, I- Thought they were the most transparent. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'll say. Okay, because <laughs> it might have been somebody's favorite, and they can talk about it. That's okay. You can not like them if you. Anne Grimm, you said you were going to say something. Uh, well, uh, not about them. Um, my favorite, and I'm surprised no one has chosen her yet, was the bank robber. And I was utterly fascinated by how Bachman handled her in the story. You ne- I never suspected that the bank robber might be a woman. Mm-hmm. Well, I never did either. I didn't he either. He was meticulous. Every time there could have been a pronoun, he referred to the bank robber. And I didn't really notice that. I didn't think, oh, what's he covering up here? Um, and I just, I, I admired her pluck. Her desperation when she, as she says, on a Friday, I had a family, I had a marriage and a job. And on by Monday, I had neither one and no place to live. And um, she, she, she it, it, did, it wasn't a sensible thing to go do, but it was something that she thought might help. And she went and did it. And um, I think there were, com- I think he had comments about her being an idiot. I don't think she was an idiot. I think she was very, very distraught by what had happened to her. Imagine your husband having a long-term affair with your boss. Um, and then when you find out you're kicked out of your house and lose custody of your kids, uh, terribly distraught. But um, I just thought she was a, a wonderful person as she related to people, I don't have any specifics, but the way she related to people once she was being brought into the conversations more towards mm-hmm. the end yeah. and, um, uh, and, and her being able to share Estelle's apartment, rent a room and it was a place then for her kids to come. Perfect for Estelle to have that company. Um, it was just, uh, anyway, she was my favorite character. Yeah, and to me, part of the sort of kind of tied everything together with Estelle and then the bank robber woman, London was her name. um, No, No, London was the bank teller. Yes, but she was also the bank robber. No. Uh Who? Then who? No, the the bank robber never had a name, did she? No, we never got her name. Yes. It was London. London was the teller at the bank. Yes. <laughs> but she yes. was also the bank robber. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't either. But I don't but either. Well, London, was the one, London was the one that, you know, 
when the bank robber came in and told the bank robber, we don't have any money, the bank robber didn't know what to say. You know, because how can you have a bank without money? That money? Was money. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And not to know that the bank had no money. I, I don't understand that. Why have a bank? It's all done electronically. Yeah. Like okay. a lot of banking is done these days. You can... I, I looked up uh, cashless bank to a different account online, and, <laughs> and it said that um, uh, Denmark is the only country that has a cashless bank. Oh. It's telling about it, yeah. Huh. So um, Google it and put in cashless bank and, uh, in Sweden. Okay. Well, see, we have another one who's, you know... <laughs> <laughs> another thing to look up stockholders and cashless banks and, but you know and grim getting back to what you were saying um you know so are they being portrayed as idiots or are they being portrayed as human oh, yeah humans humans and um i thought well i want to throw in a piece of background i read it about three months ago and then about a week ago, I picked it up. I, my goal was to read it again. I didn't get anywhere near close to that. But when I read the first chapter, I thought there's the whole story being told mm -hmm. right now. It, we don't understand it. We don't know any details, but he told the whole story in that first three pages. Okay. And um, okay, anyway, I, I was taking down quotes, but I had a uh, I had my book practically filled up after the first chapter. <laughs> um, it's easy to declare that other people are idiots, but only if you forget how idiotically being human is. Yes. How yes, exactly. yeah. And I, I think that was a big point of, of, of his story. Sure. Um, okay, more. There's such an unbelievable amount that we're all supposed to be able to cope with these days more than we can cope with. And this is even before the pandemic, let alone now. Um, some of us never managed to get the chaos under control. And then my favorite quote of all, we're not in control, so we learn to pretend all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's not being idiotic, that's just coping as best one can, no, no matter what comes up. Um, yeah, no matter what comes up. I thought I had another note about that, but I don't see it. Um, anyway, I forgot what your question was, Lynn. No, I, I was just saying, you know, was it, it, were they really idiots or were they being human? And you just, you know, you just responded to that because I think what they talked about, they talked about some really heavy, he talked about some heavy subjects, parenthood, divorce, suicide, Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of topics in there that could be just so maudlin that you just want to just go, oh, my God. And, and he didn't make light of them, but he took them as a part of life, you know, part of yeah. things that happen. And I, I thought he, he handled them in the way he wrote about them well, because he talked about them from a human standpoint, not, not from a technical, you know, descriptive standpoint. And um, I mean, to me, there were there were just a lot of quotes in there and um, just about life in general. Maybe he's heard them and he's just passing them on. He is a blogger. He may have gotten them from, you know, comments that people have written over the years. Uh, sounds like his grandmother was quite a woman. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of life in there that I think he talks about. Um, I like, know. oh, I wanted to say something. Can I tell you what my favorite quote was? Sure. Okay. Everybody. He's, talk, he's talking about um, people using the internet. And he says, um, the truth, of course, is that if people really were as happy as they look on the internet, they wouldn't spend so much damn time on the internet because <laughs> nobody who's having a really good day spends half of it taking pictures of themselves. I just yeah. cracked up. Oh, I, I know people like that, that, you know, Every couple of minutes you see, you know, so-and-so just posted, blah, blah, blah. You're like, I don't care what they're eating. I don't care where they are right now, you know? And I just, I thought that was so funny. And it's, and he says, anyone can nurture a myth about their life if they have enough manure. 
So if the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence, that's probably because it's full of shit. <laughs> I, that I picked that quote too, because that's so true. There's because of the internet, there is just so much emphasis on false facades and perfection and so much effort that goes into mm -hmm. portraying yourself, your family, your life as being completely and totally perfect and idealistic. And it's, right. it's, it drives me absolutely crazy. So that hit me too. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'm like, um, and uh, the other Anne, I can't think of your last name right at the moment. I read this book some time ago, but then I reread it because I didn't like it the first go around. Um, I didn't get much out of it, but um, second time around, I really, really liked it. But the part about the idiot, first of all, bothered me a lot, you know everybody's an idiot, you know? And then I got to thinking, oh, humanity, huh? But when you look up the, the word idiot from the Greek idios, it's been continuously <laughs> used since the 14th century. And other words that come close to it are ignorant, unschooled, jester, and professional fool. And I thought <laughs> that kind of showed all the characters. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, you know, there may be another meaning why he picked that word for it. But um, anyway, mm -hmm. that was well, I, I like the way the author tied up everything. I mean, everything was kind of intertwined. And, and uh, even at the very last, he summed up all the people, which I like. And they just didn't walk off into the sunset and you didn't know what happened to them. Right. What about him using the apartment as a way to get all these, I thought that was just so unique to get all these people together from completely different walks of life and yet having that commonality of they're all in this apartment for the same reason. I uh -huh. I, I just thought the way that, that he used that apartment as that connector was, yes. was amazing. And um, anybody want to think about Jim? What, what was Jim's role in this? He was my favorite character. He was my favorite oh, character too. Yay, Kathy. Yes, yes. I just really? every time he came in, I he had just such a calming influence, I think. And also I love the relationship between him and his son, how it was point counterpoint in terms of how things were done back in the day and how things were done now, and how sometimes that came into conflict. And the one really endearing time when um, they were looking for something, some kind of information. And um, Jim got his phone out and, and started to look for it online. <laughs> and his son said, are you Googling that? And Jim said, well, yeah, why not? And then at the end, they, they, Jim, Jack couldn't come up with anything better. So he said, okay, go ahead and Google it. It was and just what those two men had been through in terms of, you know, losing the wife and having a daughter and sister who was such a, a painful, painful part of their lives. Mm -hmm. I, he, was, he was just my favorite. I think he definitely was, was a bridge as oh, well. Yes, mm -hmm. it was, he was Googling hostage crisis. Oh. <laughs> it was the first time, you know, they were in a small town and it was the first time there had never been any situation and they weren't really sure what to do. And they kept kind of butting heads about how to right. handle this. And so, he, he was trying to hide it from his son that he was Googling it. And the son said, are you Googling it? <laughs> and then finally the son said, go ahead. And, you know, because the son wanted to call Stockholm, you know, and he was talking to the boss on the phone from Stockholm right. about it, you know. And, and I, Stockholm was telling them what to do, not really knowing what was happening right. in, in the circumstances. And then the person that was supposed to be coming from Stockholm got stuck in the, <laughs> in the <track laughs> on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like going from Stockholm to LA, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's like a comedy of errors, you know. <laughs> right. But there was there was a statement that was said about Jim and said, older men really know what to say to younger men to let them know that they care. It's so hard to find the words when all you really want to say is, I can see you're hurting. Oh, I really oh, like that yeah. quote. Yeah. 
a lot. Um, it was it was one of those personal quotes that really hit home to you know a lot of people. It's hard to say something, especially yeah. to, you know, to your own children. And there right. there were some interesting takes on everybody's definition of children and parenting and and how how they looked at parenting and um, you know what would be the uh, end all of you know becoming a parent for so especially for Julia and Ro mm -hmm. another yeah. odd couple in there but you know he talked about things like the couple next door were getting divorced because they couldn't agree on a color for a blender <laughs> right <laughs> 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 about the, the table or something at the first of it that was so funny uh, when he was being uh, interviewed and um, in the interview and being who was in the interview and she says is that an Ikea table I have it in this color and that color <laughs> All of all the people being interviewed were trying to completely yeah. destroy yeah. any kind of you know conversation that would lead to telling who the bank robber was because one of the interviewees was the bank robber you know and um, and then there was the the agent who was clueless who had <laughs> really no idea what was going on I kept saying well house tricks and I just I just <laughs> that just made me laugh every time she said that it was it was too much for I me sort of, I sort of forgot all about the real estate agent you know I got almost to the end of the book and then all of a sudden I thought wait a minute what happened to the real estate agent did I miss well, something you know <laughs> well he kept you know Jack kept saying there were seven or eight people and then it actually was nine people but he only interviewed seven people. They were trying to figure out where the blood came from. So where did the blood come from, you know, and how did he get out of the apartment? And they were trying to find a play, a way for them to get out of the apartment. And, um, and all along, the bank robber had the key and went next door uh -huh. and completely, you know. Right. But Jim had talked to the bank robber. When, when did he talk to her? Um. When they were outside waiting for pizza, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was the he delivered the pizza, and this woman came to the door, and they thought she was the agent, was actually the bank robber, who was collecting the pizza for everybody. And um, then he was sitting and talking to her. He was sitting down in the hallway and talking to her about you know about life and. And the hardships of, of being a parent and how difficult it was to connect as a parent. Well, right. yeah. Um, what about uh, Jim's wife, Jack's mom? What about her? She, even though she was not a live character, what mm -hmm. about her? She how weird her. is that? <laughs> Pardon? How weird was she? <laughs> I mean, wasn't she the priest? She was a priest. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Oh, she just. She was really out of touch. But was she? I think she was. She said one thing that she, regardless of how the world is, she was going to do, regardless of how the world is. Does anybody remember what that was? About the apple tree? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No matter what happens tomorrow, I will still plant an apple tree today. Well, that's really good, but... Uh -huh. She was really out of touch with her husband and her son, I think. And probably her daughter, because yeah. the daughter yeah. was a little, you yeah. know. Too bad. That was one thing they didn't tie up. Remember at the end of the book, Jack and Jim were off their, their um, shift, and they were driving in the car, and he said, you want to stop for coffee? And then he said, no, um, uh, we'll... But we'll lose, we'll go see um, the, the um, sister, daughter. It'll soon be her birthday. Uh, I'll, and uh, let's see, there are only 11 months to go before Christmas. Does it make any damn difference? Why? I just thought that she might like to come home. So they wanted to go bring her home. And, uh, and then he says, uh, let's see. Oh, it's, it's 24 hour drive. And, uh, and then he says, what the hell, Dad? I say we stop for coffee. So that's what they did. They drove all night and all the following day. 
knocked on her door. Maybe she'll go home with them. Maybe she won't. Maybe she's, oh, she's ready to find a better way down. Maybe she now knows the difference between how it feels to fly and how it feels to fall. Maybe she doesn't. This sort of thing impossible to control, just like love. Because perhaps it's time, what they say, that up to a certain age, a child loves you unconditionally and uncontrollably uh, for, for one simple reason, you're theirs. Your parents and siblings can love you for the rest of your life too, for precisely the same reason, the truth. There isn't any. All we've managed to find out about the boundaries of the universe is that it hasn't gotten any and all we know about God is that we don't know anything. So the only thing a mom who has a priest demand of her family was simple, that we do our best. We plant an apple tree to get today, even if we know the world is going to be destroyed tomorrow, we save those we can. But it never tells if the daughter came home or, or, you know, they went up to the door and it doesn't go on from there. That was the only thing that kind of left me hanging. Does anybody have anything about that? There was, but there was a quote earlier in the book and it was talking about, you know, when they were talking about the daughter being um, addicted mm -hmm. to drugs. And, and I thought this quote was good. Addicts are addicted to their drugs and their families are addicted to hope. They cling to it. And I, and I think that that was, the end was that hope that the daughter would want to, or the sister would want to change and come home. And but they, uh, to the, they drove for 24 hours to get there. But I don't know where they were going. Sweden isn't that big. Where are they driving for you know, 24 hours? I, I don't know where, where they were going, but um, it, just, yeah, it, it could be, um, that might be one of the loose ends, but maybe that's life. Life has loose ends and we, we don't know no. if it's going to come to any conclusion we can feel comfortable with because we always want things to end a certain way. Uh, yeah, they that's don't. the only thing they didn't conclude with about, about the, uh, the daughter. Or the, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was talking about rescuing. It, it, how, what were they... Who was trying to rescue who in this story? What was going on? You know, um, Jim was trying to rescue Jack from making, you know, some mistakes and Estelle was trying to do, but there were other characters that were trying to rescue people. Who was rescuing who? Not just the jumpers from the bridge. Um, the well, couple, <laughs> I can't think of their names. Anna, Anna Lee or whatever. Annalena and Roger. Yeah, Annalena and Roger. I. I was really surprised. I had a totally different idea of them as a couple until they were in, she was in the closet talking to Estelle. Yeah. And then I realized that because it seemed to me like he was the one in control of the relationship, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you realize that she was the one who had worked all those years and was really the breadwinner and she was trying to make him feel better. Yeah. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. um, that really got me. Yeah. yeah. He, had, he had gone past his expiration date of being, you yeah. know, oh, uh, right. hireable for any good situation. And she was trying to give him that feeling. Uh, but she went about it hiring Leonard to do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all those weird things. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 I was thinking that would be an interesting profession to go around. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, at some point, I think in the middle of this book, I started to get everybody all kind of mixed up with each other. <laughs> um, and then it all kind of came together at the end, you know. And I also had told a friend of mine what we were reading because I give her the book club list, you know, and she lives in upstate New York, but she follows along and she even watched the YouTube video of the group. Um, it would be too hard for her to join us because of the time difference and all that. But she said the same thing. She said, yeah, it all ties in, it all comes together at the end. But 
at some point, you know, you really have to kind of pay attention, even though you think when you start reading it, oh, this is going to be a lighthearted, silly, funny kind of story. But it is, but yet it's not, you know, you have to really pay attention. Well, well, well for me, the conversation in the closet just yes. brought light to just about everything because we didn't really know the characters and their depth, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, until that conversation over several glasses of wine and a cigarette or two um, in the closet, which I thought, what a place to have a conversation, but, but it worked. Yeah. It, was, it was different. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question about the real estate agent. She was not really part of the story until the very end, they found her in the attic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she really didn't interact with all the other people that came to see the apartment. Did it was she? like it was like they had the, they had the viewing and then they were all going around doing their thing and she wasn't there. She just unlocked the door basically. And why did she go up into the attic? I can't remember. Because she saw the woman come in with the gun and she was familiar. She says someone come in with the gun. I think it was interesting, speaking of that, that the real estate agent is the only other character that didn't have a name. We just know her as the real estate agent, like the bank robber. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, because she was, um, and, and uh, Daylene can attest to this, she's one of the flat characters. She was there for a reason, but that was it. She had no other place in the story, and there were you know, there were a couple of flat characters who caused other characters to do things and other things to happen in the story, but their role was, that was it. They were done once, yeah. once they got that piece going. And um, I just thought it was just, it was just a great way of creating characters that had absolutely nothing in common, but brought them all together uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. at some That's point. And, um, done as a play you know with oh. just the apartment yeah. being on stage and the characters yeah. coming and going and and all of that and even the some of the dialogue seemed to be what you would experience and just having a one set play <laughs> Yeah, there, there was a, 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 a there was a play. I can't remember the name of it. That was done on a, in the inside of a house, and it was like characters that had come to visit, and they were all uh, different, and they all lived together. I can't I can't remember, but I, but it, it could have been a movie that was about a play. I I don't remember, but it, it struck me as very similar to what you're saying, Roberta. It did it did look like it would be a play where everybody's running around and you know having their own little part in it, but. Um, what there, was a, there was a play at South Beach this week, and I think I think it's over, but maybe it's still streaming. It was that during the pandemic they streamed a lot of plays, and it was about two characters who hated each other, but the wife had told him who was off stage who never saw her that or had told the the secretary it was the secretary and a a real judge who was her boss, that he's a real curmudgeon. He's a real uh, old, old fuss budget, but he's really kind at heart and he's getting old. Well, by the end of the, the, the play, they just loved each other. It was like this. And I think I told my husband it was probably the best play I'd ever seen because it was just, so touching it was very much like this book so i had a good week <laughs> <laughs> what uh what theater was that chris pardon me oh what the theater? south coast theater south coast north county or, or north coast there's a north coast theater the one in solana oh. beach north north coast repertory yes yes i've been there i love that theater yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So anyway, you know, if, the, if, the, if that's still on, do you remember the name of it, Phil? It's, it's not anymore, no. Oh, it's not on anymore, so oh. too bad. It was, oh, and it was called, though, I got it now, Trying, which was just great because uh -huh. they were trying and it was, they were trying to each other. 
they were bad. Oh. So it was it was a good movie, very much like the book. Sounds but great. anyway, I I said that I told you that because you may want to do this uh, if they continue doing it to do the streaming of the plays. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I just, I, I hope that you enjoyed the book um, and enjoyed the, the characters and, um, and, and just, just kind of a, a laid back, but not so laid back but story. Not. <laughs> right. I love yeah. to tell you, Lynn. Like, great. You know, like, and pardon? Chris? I was just going to say, I have to tell you that I absolutely love this book. I loved it so much. And it was so different than anything I had read in a very long time that I read it twice. Oh, I read uh, it and I was sorry it was over. So I, I read it again. And it just, there's a line in there. One of the quotes that I really liked was, and it's true about everybody who came into that apartment. It said, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> I don't think anybody in that apartment foresaw what was going to happen to them, but what a wonderful, loving thing. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah, a, that was a love story. Yeah. If you haven't read his other books, the other two that were mentioned, that it's, they'd be worth reading. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that because I, I rarely find an author that I can identify with their style of writing so mm -hmm. quickly because of just, just the way that he presented it. And, and yet it's so, it's so real, you know, even though it was a crazy situation, a lot of that was so real, especially when they talked about, you know, parenthood and, and we don't really know what our children are thinking, but eventually, you know, they do grow up and we stop being a chauffeur and, you know, things like that. And I just, I, I really could identify with a lot that he said and, and yet have a little bit of a chuckle. <laughs> There's a lot of chuckles in this. <laughs> a lot. It was a good choice, Lynn. Good choice. Well, I'm glad. Excellent choice. I just wanted to say about the back, the end of it. You know, at the end of every story, they always put the author's thanks. They just put people's names. You don't know who they are. Well, I don't know if you went to the back of the book, but it says the author's thanks. And then, and he said, his wife's name is Nate Nida, I guess it is, N-E-D-A. And he says, 12 years together, 10 years married, two children, and a million road. He goes on for a whole paragraph. The next one he thinks is the monkey and the frog. I'm trying <laughs> to be a good dad. I really am. But when you jump in the car and ask, what's that smell? Are you eating candy? I lied. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. You get the feeling that it was about, you know, his what he's married and he has two kids and the monkey and the frog. So I thought that was endearing. But if go to the back of the book and look at his, uh, he thanks yeah. people, but he says something for each one of them. Right, uh, Marcia, you were going to say something. Well, that was very elaborate. I I always love to read those because it tells you so much about the author. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to share my favorite quote. Um, I actually had two of them, but this was the best. It says, that's the power of literature. You know, it can act like little love letters between two people who can only explain their feelings by pointing at other people's. Wow. I, I just thought that was great. Anybody else want to make a comment? Um, well, the, the love affair thing that Estelle talked about having the love affair, I thought it was so sweet that she would, they would meet on the elevator, I think, and exchange books, right? And uh -huh. that was her idea of a love affair. Yeah. Book, right? mm -hmm. yeah. I, and then he, at the end, he gave her a key to his apartment and then he, then he died. But I just thought that was really sweet. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really, it really was. Just, just how he kind of tied things together with just mentioning of things was, uh, I thought, just really it's clever. Very, very yeah. clever. I, well, I, I envy hey. the way people write. I do. But anyway, I, I appreciate that you read it. I appreciate your conversations today. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. I, yeah, I, I, what other? Didn't Leslie, um, Leslie yes. comment? Did, 
Did you want me to read what Leslie said? Let me see if I can. I might as well. I don't have them here. My, my printer broke. <laughs> Le Leslie had a different take on the book. She said, um, as Frederick Backman says up front, the story is about a bank robbery gone wrong, people taken hostage, love and marriage withholds lies and denials, but it's also about day-to-day -day living and the idiotic choices good people sometimes make. Ultimately, I think the story is about how kindness and compassion are so important in relationships, even if they even go unrecognized. Backman's writing style takes tune to get, time, excuse me, to get used to. I needed, I needed to be patient with the process. I enjoyed the clever plotting. It was like putting pieces of a puzzle together. I knew it all had to come together at some point, but when and how was the question. I found some of the characters interesting, but not all. Sometimes my interest waned from the constant whining, like waiting for Godot, but it, was te it, it had its tedious moments. They were bleak in their individual ways. I wanted someone to be happy, but at last their burden seemed to define them. At the end, I found myself wondering if the author had reversed the storyline so that we could meet the characters in the beginning to see their decency and compassion to give us more time to love them than weave in the intrigue of why they were captives with all of their angst. The ending, as in so many books, came in a flurry of reveals, then boom, it was over, tied in a bow. P.S. I read the book in January. Thank goodness, as I lost all of March and part of April to COVID. So um, it's a, even though I don't remember the nuance of the story, I think it was an enjoyable read, one that has left a lingering sense of positivity. So um, her take was we should know the characters' good sides before we know the bad sides. And um, I, I, that's one way of looking at it, definitely. Yeah. But um, I, I, I don't know if I would have laughed as much as her. <laughs> Yeah, if I, if I knew all their good sides, I, I it's possible. But um, anyway, uh, I enjoyed it, and I um, I'm glad that it, that everyone did as well. And um, I'm going to have to once again share this with Sharon. Yeah. Thank oh, you yeah. for, for the book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank good you, job, Lynn. Lynn. Good book. Good choice. Yeah. Lynn, good wonderful great. discussion. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the the outline for questioning and everything. It it made everything so much better. Yeah, yeah I, and, and and really, don't forget, I had my whiteboard I that know. I was checking <laughs> off. Of. <laughs> we missed your whiteboard. <laughs> well, next, I have to say really quickly that. Uh, this year has, <laughs> unfortunately, because we've got Zoom, but um, it's been the best picking year I've ever experienced since I've been in this uh, book club. The, every single book seems to be one that I want to read. So yeah, thank you. Good. Thank you yeah. all. Yeah, they are good. Well, yeah. very good. Next Don't month, forget. hopefully, Don't we'll cover. be at the library. And uh, it, our book is uh, Marcia's Pick, The Love Story of Missy Carmichael. Ha has anybody read it already? No. no. I read one Our page and I love it already. Oh. Well, it's definitely much more low key, but there are some really good surprises in it. And I think you can relax when you read it and not be too anxious. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I, I just want to say, I hope I didn't make anybody anxious with this book. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It you all resolved. Book on the uh, cloud library. Do any of you use that? No. no. How That's it where I got it. It's through the Riverside County Library System. Just go on their web page and sign up for it. And some of the books are audio. Some are you read them. You know they download them on your Kindle. But it's called the Cloud Library. Do they have audios as well? Yes. Okay. Great. Not okay. all books are audio, but a good portion of them are. Okay, thank you. And you say that, wait, you say that you just sign up for it? Yeah, you have and to- And they will let you know oh. if, if they've got it or if it's in? Yeah, you search it, you search the library, just like you do a regular library, see if they have it. Uh, you sign up for it and you use your um, current library card. And you just okay. put that, it's very, very easy to sign up. Okay. I've used it quite a while now and I really do like it. Okay, thank you. And then they notify you on email, like um, if 
if you have to put a book on hold, they'll tell you how long it's on hold and then they'll tell you when it's ready for you. And then they send you emails when you have two to three days to finish the book and return it to the library. So it's, it's very nice. Yeah. Very, yeah. very friendly. Thank you. Good to know. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, everybody. This was <laughs> wonderful participation today. Yeah, it was, it was fun. fun. Everyone be safe out there. Yeah. Stay well. See you soon, I hope. In, in person, maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Come on. All right. Bye. 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 Thanks, Kayleen. Bye. Bye. Thank you.